She's an award-winning singer-songwriter. She was raised near the tiny village of Faustin, Saskatchewan, now in the capital city. In fact, we're in downtown Regina right now. She's one of the province's finest storytellers, musicians. She's Belle Plain, and she's with me now. It might be a love story, though not one you would see. Between two stars in Hollywood, on your flat screen. One thing I've been thinking about a lot is I've been reading your work and listening to your music, and I know you mentioned this once. Do you do a lot of daydreaming? Sure do. Of, of tours, of places I want to go to, of stages I want to play, people I want to meet. Uh, places I've been, you know, revisiting those places in my daydreams. You love to watch the reruns and smoke two packs a day. When I went through all the trouble. Whether it's painting a landscape with words or a, per a poem about neighbors that, that you recently uh, posted on social media. H how much does just observing life inspire your music? That's, that is it. I'm not great at making up stories. I'm good at recounting things. And I find that that's where I'm most comfortable. So uh, uh, making those observations and, uh, and sharing them in the way that I feel is as honest as I can make it or as best as I can you know, fill in those parts that I might not be aware of. That's that's where I feel like I'm. My work sits the best in me. Resolutions all ignored, and we found us an apartment on the second floor. Well, the song you're performing for us, Two Packs a Day," I think is observational. What's the inspiration behind that song? My neighbors. Yeah, I have. Uh, we live in a place where we have a fire escape. And it operates as like a little patio hangout. Uh, and when I moved in, I just was really struck every morning by whenever I had my window open, my room would be filled with cigarette smoke. Uh, often there would be IMAX levels, volume of uh, mash playing. Uh, and then that turned into Little House on the Prairie. prairie and then it... Uh, I don't know, Rawhide, I think. And it was our neighbor whose living room window opened up onto the patio. My bedroom window opens up onto it. And he would be watching TV and smoking cigarettes. And uh, and I just got to know these, these two people over many years of living next to them. Uh, became really like honest and, and sharing stories and, uh, and Eventually, uh, things progressed where he became ill and he passed away and all the stories that I knew just expanded into this more intimate view of him when his wife shared more and more and more and I was just getting filled with these stories and I remember walking down Albert and I was just like, oh, well I have to write, I just have to write a song about them and then I'll have a record of these things that she shared with me in addition to my own memories. So I wrote a love song, which is not my, it's not my go-to. So beginning of next month, we'll take a road trip headed west. And she's a, a woman of like sturdy character and she, there were some tears, uh, just very, you know, <laughs> very quiet, uh, private tears. And she said, well, He's gonna thank you for that. You came along at the right time. And I said, oh, what do you mean? And they like to like really kind of rib each other. And she said, I was just, I just got another bill for something of his and I thought I'm gonna flush those ashes down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, so he owes you what? And I thought, oh, okay, okay, that's good. It's good to know that, I mean, it's all in fun, but it was, uh, they're just, they've been great. She's been a great neighbor. He was a real character to get to know and it's fun to write something for them that um, immortalized that.